put up to Exxon Mobil, any one of those, BP, at one time they're all standard oil. Okay? All right. So, this was built for John D. And I'm going to refer to him as JDR. His wife's name was Laura. After JDR died, his only son, youngest child, but the only son, John D. Rockefeller Jr., who I'm going to refer to as Junior, he moved in with his wife, Abby. After Junior died, his second son, Nelson, was governor of New York State, vice president along with Ford. He moved in with his second wife, Happy. They had two sons, Nelson, <laughs> Junior, and Mark, the only children who grew up here at Kiker. So those are the generations that lived here. Okay. Now, the first house, first house was built between 1906 and 1908. Not as grand looking as this one. More in keeping with what JDR wanted. Something much simpler, like an early, a colonial style house. Three levels and an attic. But there were always some problems with the house. Noisy plumbing, noisy delivery area, all sorts of things. So in 1911, they decided to rebuild. Everything above the first floor was rebuilt. So everything that you see is actually part of that first structure. Okay? And then in place of a fourth floor, in place of an attic, we have a complete fourth floor now. And then this grand facade it looks almost like a Roman temple or a Greek temple, though the carvings everywhere. Now, there are two architects involved, Ogden Cardman Jr., who designed the interior, and William Wells Bosworth, who designed the gardens. And they kind of collaborated and came up with a design for the, the, the exterior of the house. So I'll just point out some of the features. That triangle section is known as a pediment. And when we go into the house, there are two rooms that have a smaller version of that pediment because Cardman felt that there should be a link between the exterior of the house and the interior. So all the carvings, the large one to the left represents the meter, that one represents Apollo. Then below Apollo, we have those carpet stools. See those what I'm talk, referring to mm -hmm. over by the side of the windows? Uh, those represent the arts. You have architecture, you can see a column. Uh, painting, you can see a palette with brushes. And music, and that's in the shape of a lyre. And you can even see pipes as well. Then on the other side, you have those big figures represent the seasons, which was a popular theme um, during the classical period, uh, during the Renaissance period especially. So we have flowers representing spring, then we have a beehive, summer, and then we have wheat for fall. Nothing for winter, because as a rule, JDR did not spend winters here. I I, any of us would want to be up here. It gets very cold and very windy. All right, so nothing for, um, yeah, I've said, that, I've said that already. So on top we have an eagle, and that, you can see JDR's initials on the shield. At least you can see the R. Everybody sees that? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all these carvings are done by Francois Tornetti. And you hear me mention that name when we walk through the garden, because he designed most of the fountain heads. So that was a major change from the first house. Another change was that tunnel because before that, everything was delivered out in the open. It was very noisy in the mornings. And so JDR saw an opening where you could create a tunnel leading over to the north end of the house, underground. So now service vehicles approached the house from that entrance, and now all those deliveries could be dropped off in silence. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> so JDR was quite pleased with himself for that. Another change was to extend this area, because when the first house was in place, there was just one gate. That gate to the left used to be right here. And then the ground just sloped downwards towards the golf course. During the renovation, they moved the gate, added a second one. That gate, that gate is dated 1913. And then this area was built, built up. This is mostly landfill. And it was extended to include that fountain, which is a copy of one that can be seen in Florence at the Beverly Gardens. The large figure above represents Oceanus. So he's holding up a time. He's commanded the figures below, which represent the Nile, the Ganges, the Euphrates, great rivers of the old world, to pour water. Everything is symbolic. Pour water from their urns into the basin, which is supposed to represent the ocean. And now these figures actually face the Hudson, because the Hudson is on the other side of the Hudson. So according to Bosworth, who designed the garden, the Hudson is now just as important as these older rivers. Okay, now of course, very grand, very formal, especially when the family lived here. These trees were originally elms. 
Uh, many of the trees that I talked about stored in that building that we saw would be placed here this time of year. Bay trees, lemon trees, orange trees are just all over the place. Very formal setting. Now as formal as, as it was, and still is, Nelson, June, and Mark, as children, this is where they play. This is home. So they played baseball out here. <laughs> home run was, the, I mean, home base was somewhere on that end. <laughs> if they hit the ball into that garden, that was a home run. So they had it, you know, had it all figured out. <laughs> and of course, lots of places where they could sleep and all of that. So as children, running in and out of fountains, they had a wonderful time, as you can imagine. All right? All right, so you probably realize that um, no one lives here anymore. Now, the, the Rockefeller Brothers Fund managed the society, and I'm going to refer to that as RBF. That was founded back in the 1940s by Junior Sons, who wanted to make a difference, so that was their, their little you know, way of giving back. So they formed, formed this organization. It's still in progress today, it's still functioning today, and they have a conference at the Coach Bar. They have conferences several times in the year. Conference is dealing with security around the world and mm -hmm. poverty and the environment, that type of thing. So if there's not enough room at the conference center for those people attending these conferences, they occupy bedrooms on the third and fourth floor. Okay. But other than that, the house is not used. Uh, the National Trust owns this part of the estate, but they don't run it, run by RBF. Historic Hudson Valley runs the tours, and this organization was founded by Junior. It used to be known as Sleepy Hollow Restoration. And um, that's about it, okay? Uh, Happy is still very much alive. She mm -hmm. was much younger than the governor. Mm -hmm. She lives on the estate. Every now and again, she's sighted in the garden. Mm -hmm. She's about 88 now, mm -hmm. okay? All right, so we're gonna walk up to the front porch. Uh, those of your cameras, we're not coming back here. If you need a photograph of the house, you need to take it now. You won't be back this way. ちゃんとここにはゴルフ場もあります Oh, Diana. Oh, 
ですね広大な庭ですね